Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're making a scratch stock. Oh, yeah, one of those. Let's have some fun. Five hundred year old English oak. Purple heart. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. This video is gonna feel a little bit like some of the old ones because I have been sick the last week or so and then gone a couple weeks before that. And so we didn't have a chance for Luke to come over and shoot the video. So I'm actually shooting this one. Uh, so yeah, video quality will be a little different. We're gonna be starting with this chunk of Purple Heart and I'm just going to make it about that long. I don't need anything specific. It's gotta be, you know, around three and a half, four, maybe five inches wide is about a good fence. The Purple Heart will be a body that has a slot cut into it, allowing the beam to slide in and out, uh, as well as be the fence that the work can ride around. For the actual shape, I'm just gonna use some circle templates and draw out something that looks about right. Kind of an OG shape coming off the side and yeah, there's nothing special to this. Just make it look interesting. If you want to make it just a square, you can make it just a square. If you want to try chopping corners off and doing different things, this is a good chance to experiment, try something a little different. For this one, I'm just going to use the turning saw, and that gets it really close to it, and then I can come in with a rasp and really get it down to that shape I want, bring it down to the lines I drew, and uh, the rasp does really quick work, even on this purple heart. But then I can come back in with a finer file like this and take out the marks from the rasp and get it down to close to what I want. This file is a little bit rough, so I'm going to come in with an even finer file after this and get it down to a really nice smooth surface. You can see how in just a little bit we've got down to that really happy surface. But uh, I want it a little bit more than that, so we're going to go down to one step finer on the file. Having a good collection of files and rasps can be an amazing thing in the shop. And most of my files are just standard metalworking files. They don't have to be anything special. Uh, the rasps, though, those are, are pretty special to woodworking. On the corners, I'm going to chamfer it. I want to add a little chamfer in here, and it's a great chance to practice your freehand carving. And uh, if you let it ride on the bevel, you can actually do this really easily. It's one of these fun things. Once you try it a few times, it, it comes out relatively well. And it's very, very pleasing. You have to kind of stop, otherwise you're going to end up doing too many curls. You get a really nice chamfer all the way around it. So there's our body. Now we're going to make the beam out of some 500-year-old white oak. Uh, it's actually an English oak that uh, a friend gave to me when I was in England a few years ago. And I've been slowly making a few things out of this piece, and it is, it's really kind of cool. Uh, it came out of an old barn out there. I'm going to make the beam about one inch by one inch, eh, something around there. It doesn't have to be anything special. Um, I'm just going to mark it out and then rip it down. I'm going to rip it to, uh, down uh, across the board first, and then in, in length with the board, well, you'll see what I'm saying. It really doesn't matter which, matter which way you want to do it, other than I want to save as much of the other piece so I can use it for other projects in the future. A good large tooth handsaw can do amazing work, and uh, if you treat it well and set it up right, it can actually get you really close to the line, and you only have to take a few shavings to smooth it out and give yourself a clean surface. So there's our beam. Next thing I want to do is, is figure out how do I want to attach this, and I actually want to inset it a little bit into the back. So for this, I'm going to mark out the center of the beam and mark out the center of the, of the body, and uh, then I can put those center lines together and mark either side of the beam. And this will give me marks on the body. And then I can play connect the dot between the marks in the front and the back and draw a line exactly where the side is. Um, I could set the beam on here and then put a marking knife down either side of it. Uh, but then it's a little bit harder to see where the center is. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as it's about 90 degrees to the face. And it doesn't even have to be 90 degrees to the face of this. Uh, the scratch stock will work perfectly fine if it's off a degree or two. Uh, so it's one of these things you don't have to be perfect. You can actually use, a, 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 this would be a good chance to learn things and try something a little new. To remove most of the waste, I'm going to come in with the chisel and remove most of it down close to depth. Uh, the depth of this is about an eighth of an inch. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. It just has to be something to hold that beam so it doesn't twist back and forth in the slot. I'll get the beam to fit in on one side, and then I can turn the body around and uh, chisel in from the other side. And this is where I'm going to do 99% of the work. Um, I will come in with a router plane and clean up the surface to give myself a perfectly smooth bottom. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. I'll actually have a few little imperfections in this, but that's that's okay um, because uh, it's going to be uh, housed inside the beam and you're never going to see it. And if it's not perfectly smooth, it really doesn't make that big a difference. 
If the beam doesn't fit absolutely perfectly, you can actually come back in and just widen it out just a hair, and then it slides in really nicely. And I was very, very happy with the, the fit on this. I want it to be tight enough so I can slide it by hand relatively easily, but still tight enough that it doesn't fall off when I flip it around. So now let's go over to the beam, and we need to cut a slit that will hold the cutter for the scratch stock. And so I'm using uh, a saw. It really doesn't have to be anything specific. I don't have to make this groove a specific um, thickness. I just need it to be something that the, the, the saw plate will fit into, and then I can pinch it down. And so it doesn't have to be a particular length or depth or anything like this. It's kind of one of these things you can experiment with. You, know, you can find scratch stocks that are really short. You can find scratch stocks that are really long. Um, generally, it's rare to use a scratch stock much more than three inches into a body. So it doesn't have to be that much longer. On the main body, we need to create a slot for the screw to be able to slide up and down. And this will allow us to position the fence um, along the beam. And that makes it a lot easier to put the cutter into the beam and then slide the fence exactly where it needs to be, as opposed to trying to fit the cutter exactly where it needs to be on a locked fence. Um, you can lock the fence onto it and slide the cutter around, uh, but it's much, much easier to do this. So I'm just going to drill a bunch of holes, play connect the dots with a chisel, and then file it smooth. I want to be able to get this screw to fit into that slot and slide up and down uh, from one end to the other and actually move it really easily. So we're going to come in with a file. Um, I think I ended up using a, a curved tooth file for most of it and then you know, come in with a fine file and really clean it out and get a nice slot that the screw can fit into and then slide all the way from the top to the bottom. Uh, this can actually take a, a bit more work because it'll look like it's done and then, oh no, I got a little spot here, I gotta move. And in this case, I drove it in and found out yeah, it's a little too tight, I can't move it around, it's kind of wedging in there. Uh, found my hole through the beam wasn't exactly straight. You'll see that there's three holes through the beam. Uh, this will be the clamping mechanism and then there's one in the top that attaches it to the body. Everything from here on out is just detail work to make it look kind of nice. I'm going to round over two of the top edges. I'm going to do most of that with the rasp and then come into the file and gives a really nice clean look. I love the look of, of white oak uh, when it's been cleaned off with a file. It just, it just really shines and it's beautiful. And of course, this is wood by right, so we're going to chamfer all the edges. And a lot of the chamfering can be done with a rasp and then come with the file and clean it out. On the long edges, uh, it's easier just to do with a plane and then play connect the dot on that rounded edge with a file. And it just took a few minutes to get a nice little clean bead um, uh, chamfer on the sides. And just like that, it's... Uh, done. Um, the shape is all there and you can see how this all comes together. That body then can slide and give you a fine adjustment to uh, to put it in there. So if you need it to be farther out, you can put it in between the last two screws and you get closer, you put it in between the front two screws and uh, it all comes together. So now on to the finish. And of course, this is wood by right, boiled linseed oil, homemade boiled linseed oil. Uh, really brings out the oak. It's one of my all-time favorites for the color. And for hand tools, you don't need something that's terribly protective. You just need something that adds that color, adds a little bit of dust protection, feels good in the hand. And that's where boiled linseed oil and pa paste wax really come out. I flood the surface with it, let it absorb as much as it wants. When it stops absorbing it, I wipe off the excess, let it cure for eh, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, nothing major, just to let it in. And then I start putting on the paste wax. I'll let the paste wax sit for uh, a few hours and then come in and polish it off. And you get a really nice surface that is, uh, it feels fantastic in the hand and it looks phenomenal. It's one of my all-time favorites. So we can slide in the cutter. Um, I'll be doing a video on making the cutter eventually because you can do it with beads and coves and um, blood grooves and other things like that. that you, can, you can do just about any shape you want. And then clamp it in between the two spots you want. Uh, so that you can put it the appropriate distance away from the fence. Put the fence in and then uh, tighten that down with one more wing nut and you're good to go. As long as it is uh, set up the right distance from the fence, that's it. The scratch stock's ready to go. And here is a scrap that I can show you how it works. And it cuts in really nicely. One of the things with that you can actually do is a stopped bead um, or a stopped rounded groove. It makes it very, very easy to do with a scratch stock. Um, it's good to make small profiles like this, or if you're cleaning up larger profiles, it's a very, very quick way to make a nice bead shape, curve, or whatever you want. Uh, really fun, quick, easy project that most people can do in an afternoon or a weekend. And yeah, really like how this one came out. So there you have it. A scratch stock is kind of a tool that a lot of people don't know about, but it is a really, really cool tool for putting in small details or finishing off details on larger things. Uh, it's a, a simple tool that has been around for uh, just about as long as woodworking. But 
uh, it comes in all different shapes, styles, designs, and not a whole lot of people know about it. I made a couple of these in the past. I have another one here. Uh, they come in a bunch of different designs and styles, and I'm probably doing a video here soon about how to make the cutters and what are they good for and some of the other uses that these regularly come up in. Uh, it's one of those things that if you're going to be doing a lot of beading, uh, if you're going to be doing uh, blood grooves and things like that and cutting boards, these are phenomenal. Anytime you just need to put that trim detail around something, this can do it very, very quickly and efficiently and get you a really nice surface. If you would like to see my really, really old video on making this one and kind of see the difference in between the two, I'll leave that out. Uh, this is, there's a lot of history back there. This is kind of a fun tool to make because it's really simple, really easy, and most people can make one in an afternoon without much problem at all. Uh, you don't have to make them special or shiny. They just have to have a fence and a way to hold a blade and you can make a scratch stock. It can be as simple as a slot and a marking gauge or as fancy as something like this. So stay tuned for a Thursday video coming out here soon where I'll actually be talking about what is a scratch stock, or how does it get used, and how do you make the cutters. I'm looking forward to that one. If you have any particular questions about this build, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can get to. So thank you. Uh, honestly, putting comments down there does help out the channel, so that means a lot. Anytime you hit comment, like, share, subscribe, well, you know it, those things do help out the algorithm, they help the channel to grow, they mean a lot, and thank you. For those of you who want to take it one step farther, you may notice that there are a bunch of names that are regularly scrolling over on the side. Those are patrons on Patreon, as well as members here on the channel, people who sponsor this channel and help us financially. Thank you! Uh, without you guys, we would not be here. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewers, so thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more, but there's information about Patreon down below, or click the little join button, become a member here on YouTube. There are special perks for both, and that does mean a lot. Until next time, have a wonderful day. The Scratch Stock, the little known cousin of the Back Scratcher.